Okay, in this video we'll be talking about drawing the locus. So first we'll be talking about the criteria or the requirements of drawing the root locus. So first there's symmetry. The root locus will be symmetric around the real axis. Complex poles and zeros will always have conjugate pairs. The real axis segment. The areas of the root locus on the left hand side segment of the real axis is numbered odd for finite one and root poles, and the finite open root zeros. Next is the start end point. So as the gain increases, the root locus will traverse from open loop poles to open loop zeros. This is how we mathematically prove this criteria. So we see that from the block diagram that you see before you, where we have a closed loop system of k times j of s as the plant. The transfer function becomes k times j of s divided by 1 plus k times j of s times h of s. g of s is equal to the numerator s divided by the denominator s, and h is also the same thing. t of s is equal to k times ns divided by ds, 1 plus k times n of s plus divided by d of s over n of s divided by d of s. This will become k times n of s divided by d of s, divided by the summing of d of s d of s where we can simply eliminate the following elements and we see that the transfer function we get is k times n of s times d of s divided by d of s times d of s plus k times n of s times n of s now as k is equal to zero we see that the value of the transfer function becomes the following and we see that as k approaches infinity, we see that the transfer function becomes the following. Number four is the number of branches. Now, the number of branches of the root locus always equals to the number of closed loop poles. Since the root locus represents the traveling path of closed loop poles as the gain increases, the number of branches equals to the number of closed loop poles. And number five, we see the root locus as it approaches infinity. For every finite open loop pole that doesn't have a finite open loop zero indicated with the denominator being of higher order than the numerator, they will move towards infinite open loop zeros. The path will approach straight lines as an asymptote, and the asymptote has three components, the numbers, the starting point on the real axis, and the angle against the real axis. Okay, now let's get on to sketching the root locus. Let us consider a system as the following. Let's analyze the poles and zeros, then place them on the S-plane. So before placing them, let's remind ourselves that the root locus sketching criterion. Now let's go on to the S-plane. As you see before you, we'll be using MATLAB to assist us in visualizing the root locus for this particular system. It is very common for control engineers to use MATLAB to assist them when analyzing particular systems in the industry or field. So, let's check the criteria we were discussing earlier. Symmetry, real axis segments, start and end points, the number of branches and the behavior of the system as it approaches infinity. We see that the poles and zeros are symmetric about the real axis. Regarding the real axis segment, we see the positions from here that are, there are five odd numbered poles and zeros. So there's supposed to be a root locus here. What we see here is that there are only four even numbered poles and no zeros, so there won't be a root locus here. Same applies from other perspectives. See, so on the odd number segments, we see that there will be root locuses. As we see when we calculate using the mathematical approach, it does confirm our theory. Now let's check the start and end points. The root locus will move from the finite poles to zeros. Since there's only one finite zero, 
the other three poles will move toward infinity zeros. You could also see that there are four branches of root loci, which is equal to the number of poles. Now let's look for the asymptote criterions. The first one is the number of asymptote lines. Next, the real axis starting point for asymptotes. And lastly, the angle against real axis for the asymptotes. After we obtain these values, we can part properly draw the asymptote lines. Here we can show the angles against the real axis. And after a bit of cleaning up, we have our root locus sketch. We can confirm our drawing with the help of the MATLAB simulation. We see that the root locus we illustrated is very similar to the root locus resulted from MATLAB, which confirms that the criterions and the theory that we have been discussing are valid and are critical in designing a root locus by hand. Next, we'll be talking about the breakaway and break-in points. The breakaway point refers to a real axis segment coordinate where the root locus starts to leave the real axis segment towards the complex plane. Break-in point refers to a real axis segment coordinate where the root locus re-enters the real axis segment from the complex plane. Since closed loop poles travel path through the root locus relates to increment in gain, we can define the gain as a function of a real axis segment coordinate. As the graphic suggests, the breakaway point, the gain will, will approach its maximum value for poles traversing on the real axis segment before leaving towards the complex plane. Conversely, at break-in point, the gain would have minimum value for poles re-entering the real axis segment before ending at zeros. Hence, the first derivative or gain function, which itself is a function of real axis segment coordinate, will give us the respective coordinate values. This is how we mathematically derive the formula and find out the coordinate values. You can see from the video that we have derived mathematically that the coordinate values of the break and breakaway points are as such. There's another way to find out the values called the transition function. Now let's see the sim simulation using MATLAB and proves that the root locus sketch and more importantly the breakaway and break-in coordinates are correct. And so ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully uh, discussed how to make a root locus and how to sketch by hand a root locus and how to confirm that the root locus that we've been discussing and been theorizing about is confirmed by MATLAB. And we hope that you can now start using the root locus technique and analyzing systems. Thank you.